what's up? Here, so here's my studio. It is um, a Siri in the studio. So this is in my studio right here. Um, as you can see, the computer, some sound treatment. It's quite treated, so um, that's why um, I can I can work on sound here pretty well. I have also a um, a boot, but I won't record it because I'm doing it alone and everything. I'm not gonna use the boot to record. Uh, this is my recording boot. Um, it's quite treated too, uh, just to make sure um, it's pretty dead in there, uh, just to record different things. But um, uh, because I'm gonna need access to my computer and uh, to do a couple of things, it's easier if I'm closer to it. Uh, and um, first, um, you need first element here that you can tell it's a pretty good seat. Uh, very important to be comfortable when recording. Then, um, as you can see here, I have um, I have uh, three mics. I like to use uh, for my setups. I like to use three mics um, to get stereo sound. I'm, I'm gonna get it from small capsule here. So, some small mics. There's one here, one other there. These are uh, Rode NT5s. Um, I, I might borrow some other mics. We'll see. I might use them too. Um, these are really just, you know, decent cheap mics fine they do they work great uh, it's not the best mics but they're okay and uh, low budget it's pretty good um, I like to use also as a center here you can see this um, a Rode NTK which is a tube mic this one and um, as a tube mic obviously it has a tube in it and that's one of the upgrades I made I suggest you uh, maybe invest in a little tube, maybe 50 bucks or 100 bucks in the tube to put in there. I've put um, a Genelex in there, which I'm, I'm pretty happy with. It does help the, the eye end to be a little more silky. I'm also going to use uh, my pickup, which is actually in my guitar, is a McIntyre right now. Uh, this is a transducer, uh, a little feather it's called and it um, it's a transducer so uh, it pick up also the vibrations on the guitar some of the percussions uh, I use now the this preamp I'm gonna go through um, the Archangel uh, preamp this one is a, a, a small one the X7 um, so I'm plugging it in and go into the and the and the sound then the computer so uh, yeah, this is, um, <clears throat> this is my setup right there. I've put the the, the camera right there, uh, just because I can uh, I can get through the mics and see the whole guitar. Uh, if I take my guitar here, you can see the whole the whole thing. I I am starting the setup, so I'm not sure they might move a little bit, but it should look like that, something close to this. So, like I said, this one. Small mic here, well, is about not a foot, but almost from from the guitar here, and it's pointing the end of the fretboard. It's pretty much close to the 12th fret here. It's about this distance here. Same distance on this side here. From uh, this one is pointing kind of up the upper bridge here. It's not straight in front. It's kind of sounding car cardboardy right there. And the, the more you move off this way, it's gonna sound really bright and thin. Um, so you you don't want to get too much. So I, I like kind of be 45 degrees or something. So I get I get very nice uh, in this side. What I really like uh, on this side of the, the spectrum of the guitar is the the attack of the notes are really shimmery, like bells sound really crisp and clear. And very very nice. This side is more natural, a little more uh, bassy. Um, you have to be careful; it might be too much. Sometimes you get some some boominess in there from the sound hole. And the the upper one here, the center one, kind of pointing up somewhere around there, on the on the soundboard. I just like it's kind of a good blend between both. Makes sense. It's in the middle, um, and it's gonna represent the center and um, and. The, spectrum so you get the left right pretty wide full pan and this one's gonna be in the middle just as 
you can hear it there so you get everything and you get a very nice image stereo image a very wide but still strong uh, stereo image out of these three mics <clears throat> one thing that's very important is the phase uh, that's a problem when you use a lot of mics pick up you're gonna experiment some phase problems look at the phase make sure they uh, they're pretty much the same distance here same distance there uh, so the three mics are at the same distance if you look from the side you should see that the, the angle of the guitar and the angle of the, the three capsules of the mics are aligned in the same plan so you have a, the same angle, same distance here. So this should be in phase. Uh, you can tell if you look at the waveforms afterwards in your in your DAW. I'm gonna use Logic X, but in your DAW, if you look at the, you, you're uh, zooming in, you see your waveforms, and you see one is starting before or after. It might be closer if it's before, so it picks the sound first before the other ones, or um, so you'll see. Obviously, you have to check in mono. If everything is is working fine in mono, then you're you're good. Other thing is um, the pickup. The pickup will always take the sound in first, um, so you have to check that carefully. It's close to the source. There's no air in between, so the the, um, the sound has a speed, so it won't reach the mic at the same time as the pickup. So make sure you might have to switch it out or uh, phase the pickup compared to the mics. So that's another detail you want to make sure. It's very important to have a full sound. Otherwise, it's going to make some holes in the spectrum and you're going to have a cum filter problem and stuff like that. So um, if you don't have three mics also, don't worry. Uh, you can use two, just two mics. I have a second NTK like this one. So I used to actually um, record with two of them right there no center um, I kind of like um, this uh, for the stereo images to be a little wider but um, or to feel wider and I kind of like also to have a mic on this way to pick up some of the percussions I'm doing here a little stronger also it's gonna appear more on the on the left side um, and some of the percussions here or oomph it's gonna take in by this one some some of the slaps and everything's gonna be picked up by there. So everything that you're doing is gonna is gonna be picked up at a certain place. Uh, so you get you get really a closer look at everything that's gonna happen on the guitar. So uh, I kind of like that for that reason. These mics now are running into uh, these pieces here. Um, my two small mics are going into this one. It's a Behringer, actually a very cheap preamp. Okay. <laughs> uh, once again, what what I did there is, is to, to. It's actually a very surprising cheap preamp. The, this is actually pretty good. I don't think you can find them anymore. But anyways, um, I've put two different uh, two tubes in there. I changed the tubes for better tubes. It does help a lot, and so I can get uh, get some good sounds out of it. This is my one of my favorite preamp here uh, for that kind of stuff. Uh, this is the Millennia. This is a HV3C. Uh, this is two channels. It has just a gain knob and uh, some power like 48 volt. And um, because this one is transistor, uh, I'm gonna run my Rode NTK two mics into that transistor preamp. And uh, it has a very clear, transparent sound. It will go into that uh, Symphony IO Apogee system, which is an all-in-one system. It's, it's pretty expensive, but it's a very, very good converter in there. It's a top-notch converter. And that's the very important thing about it. So um, I, I like, uh, if you have a great converter, that's, that's one of the most important uh, thing in your chain. Uh, you can get probably a Quartet, um, from Apogee or something like that that will work pretty well. Um, also if um, if you have a, a bigger room uh, or um, if you go to a, a bigger place that you like the sound of it's, it could be even better if you have a great recording room then uh, uh, you could maybe add a pair of mics to get, to get that uh, ambient sound from uh, far and get more of that natural room. Um, what I'm gonna do, uh, since I have just a small space here at my house and uh, my studio, 
um, it's rather ha it's rather important to have something a little more dead uh, with one you can gonna compress and and do the whole whole thing whole processing um, you 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 will get it some of that room sound up up there and uh, if, if that room sounds like crap you're gonna be stuck with it so um, so that's why here it, it sounds pretty decent so uh, and it's pretty dead I'd rather be a little more dead than too alive and crappy so uh, if you don't have a space like that I guess you could invest in um, maybe um, a few sound panel um, sound treatment just to put around you around uh, behind a little far behind the mics or something or on a couple walls in the corner or just so you can um, you can have a dead sound and dead enough um, to avoid that uh, cra the, the reflections from the room to, to, to be taken fr from uh, with the mics but what I keep in mind is if I have a dead uh, more rather dead uh, room uh, I'm gonna create anyways I'm gonna show you when I get to the processing of reverbs and rooms um, I'm gonna put something like a like a room to recreate uh, an environment for the guitar um, just to recreate some air or space um, later so for now I, I like to use it as a dead spot and do a little more processing so I get back that a nice room that I could be recording in um, so that's it